Today we are going to do lesson six, compare and order fractions. And while you don't necessarily need it, I think it might be helpful to have your fraction bar chart and your fraction bars, the ones that are in little pieces. So let's start at the beginning. To compare fractions, create equivalent fractions with the same denominators or the same numerators. Use the least common multiple or the least multiple common to sets of multiples. And I'm sure that they're gonna explain to us what that means. So Ramon has an insect collection. The table shows the lengths of four insects in his collection, which is longer, a mosquito or a whirligig beetle. Well, we can see first that a whirligig beetle is three eighths of an inch, and a mosquito is one quarter of an inch. So those don't have the same denominator, so it's kind of hard to compare them. So we need to find the least common multiple. Well, our multiples of four, remember our multiples, that's when we multiply. So four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, and so on. And multiples of eight, well, eight times one is eight, eight times two is 16, and so on. So our least common multiple, so our smallest multiple is eight. So that's what we're gonna write here. The least common multiple of the denominators is eight. Now we're going to create equivalent fractions that use eight as the denominator. So they show us we're gonna multiply one fourth by two over two because four times two is eight. And one times two then gives us two over eight. And for three eighths, we don't have to multiply it by anything, but they're showing us that even if we multiply it by one over one, that gives us the same number. When the denominators are the same, the fraction with the greater numerator is the greater fraction. So of the two numbers, two and three, three is closer to eight. So two out of eight is smaller than three out of eight. So that we can see we've got this less than sign. So which one is longer? The whirligig beetle. On to page two. So this table shows the cooking times needed for different foods. Order the foods from least to greatest cooking times. So they show us here our multiples of one. Well, those just go up by one. So one, two, three, four, and on and on. Our multiples of five are five, 10, 15, 20, and so on. And our multiples of two are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and so on, counting up by twos. But where did we even get these numbers? Well, let's look over here at our cooking time. One is our numerator for rice, five is our numerator for lasagna, and two is our numerator for enchiladas. So we found our least common multiples of our numerator happens to be 10 because both of all three of these have 10. So now we need to generate equivalent fractions that use 10 as the numerator. So we need to do one times 10 to get us 10 in the numerator. And we have to do the same to the bottom. So four times 10 is 40. For the lasagna, well, five times two is 10. So we have to multiply the bottom by two. Six times two is 12. And the same for the enchiladas. Two times five is 10. So we have to do the same thing to the bottom. Three times 10 is 15. Now we're gonna compare the, new, the denominators. When the numerators are the same, the fraction with the greatest denominator is the least fraction. So think about it on our number chart over here, 1 16th, 16 is a bigger number than say 1 4th because it's in all these tiny little pieces. So 1 16th is smaller than 1 4th. So from least to greatest are cooking times, 
our, well, 10 40th was our rice. 10 over 15, that was our enchiladas. I'm just gonna put an E. And 10 over 12, that was our lasagna. And now we're gonna check. So this is where you can use your fraction bars. We're gonna check the models to show that 1 fourth is less than 2 thirds, which is also less than 5 over 6. And we can see by shading it in that, yep, this is our order. One fourth is less than two thirds is less than five six. Okay, on to number one. So we have three fourths and one half. Well, let's look at our fraction bars over here. Three fourths is here, one half is here. Three fourths is bigger than one half. Number two, three sixths and three fourths. Well, our numerators are the same. So we can use the same trick we used up here for the cooking times and whichever has the bigger denominator, so six is bigger than four, that one must be less than. Because think if we had six pieces and three were colored in, and we had four pieces, pretend these are the same shape. Three fourths is bigger than three sixths. Okay, on to page three. We're doing the same thing. So two sixths and one third. We could use our fraction bars or we could use what we've learned about equivalent fractions. So to get from two, to, from one to two, we multiply by two. And we have to do both to the same side. So one times two is two, and three times two is six. So are two six and two six the same? Yep, so they're equal. Okay, we have three fifths and five sixths. Now this one's tricky because we do have fives in both numbers, but they're not in the same place, so we can't compare them right away. What we have to do is find our least common factor of five and six. So five, our factors are five, or our multiples, I mean, there's a difference between multiples and factors. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And our factors of six are six, 12, 18, 24, and 30, and so on for both of these. But both of these have 30, so that must be our least common multiple. So 3 over 5 times 6 over 6, because that's how we get 30. 5 times 6 is 30. 3 times 6 is 18 over 30. And now we take our five over six and we multiply that by five over five. Five times five is 25. Six times five is 30. Because remember, we need to have the same denominator to compare them. And which one has more? 25 has more. So five over six is bigger than three over five. Now on to number five. This one's a lot simpler. So four fifths over or eight tenths. So we can multiply this side by two because we know four times two is eight. So four fifths times two over two equals eight over 10. Are those the same? Yep. So we can say these are equal. On to number six. In this one, they already have the same denominator, so we just need to find which one is bigger. Well, two is bigger than one, so two thirds is greater than one third. Now, four tenths and one half. Well, we could look at our chart over here. One half is bigger than four tenths, or 
we could multiply one half times five over five because two times five equals 10. So we have the same denominator and one times five is five. And five tenths is bigger than four tenths. Okay, let's look at five eighths and two thirds. Again, we could use our chart, but it's better if we do it with math to make sure. So we need to find our least common multiple. Well, for three, we've got three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, and 21. I'm running out of room. And 24. For eight, we have eight, 16, and 24. So, our least common multiple is 24. Sometimes you have to go pretty far, but once you have the practice in, you'll just know them right off the bat. So five over eight times, well, eight times three is 24. So five times three equals 15, eight times three equals 24. And two times three, or two over three times eight over eight, because three times eight equals 24. That gives us the same denominator. Two times eight equals 16. Well, which one's bigger, 16 or 15? 16. So five eighths is less than two thirds. Okay. Three fourths and one third. This is one that you'll just memorize. It's just a lot easier and you can visualize it because if you have a circle with three fourths colored in and then a circle with only one third colored in, well, you can tell right off the bat that three fourths is bigger than one third. Okay, now two thirds over six and six over nine. So we could do this one of two ways. We could make six over nine smaller or we can make two over three bigger. I'm going to make two over three bigger. And remember it's not bigger in the sense that it's worth more because they're worth the same. I just want the denominators to match. So three times three equals nine. So I'm gonna multiply each side by three. This would equal six over nine. So these are equal fractions. We could also have gone the other way where we could have divided each side by three and gotten two thirds. Okay, now one half and three fourths. Well, we can also visualize this one, one half, is not as big as three fourths because remember we can also say one half is two fourths so one half is smaller than three fourths on to page four. Oh, i skipped some gotta go back okay now we're going to order from least to greatest check your answer using fraction tiles and number lines so we're not going to do all of these because it's the same process that we did up above, and I think you'll, you'll have gotten it. But we're gonna do a couple of them. So we have four sixths, one third, and three thirds. Well, two of these already have the same denominator, three. And so how can we get four over six to have the same denominator? Well, we can divide each side by two because we know six divided by two is three. So four over six divided by two over two equals two thirds. So now we're gonna put these in order. It's gonna go one third, four six, because we know four six is equal to two thirds, and three thirds, which equals one whole. Another one that we're gonna do is number 14, and we're gonna use that numerator trick. 
where all three numerators have the same. So then we order them according to which is the biggest denominator. Because remember, if the denominator is bigger, that means it's in tinier pieces. So three tenths pieces is smaller than three fifths pieces. So these are actually in order already. And so we're going to we're going to skip these other ones, but if you want a little bit of a challenge, try them on your own and see if you can find your least common multiple for each of these or you can use your number line chart over here. Let's use your number line for number 16 here. So we can see two tenths is right here. Two fifths is a lot bigger, so we know two tenths is at least smaller. And three eighths is right here. So we go two tenths, three eighths, two fifths. So two tenths is our smallest, three eighths is in the middle, and two fifths is our biggest. So let's go on to the next page. Problem solving. We need to know which meat makes up the most of Mr. Collins' sandwich. And they give us a nice diagram over there that says it's one-third turkey, two-fourths ham, and one-sixth roast beef. So we have to find which has the most in his sandwich, and we can do that with our least common multiples. So for threes, we have three, six, nine, 12, for 4, we have 4, 8, 12, 16, remember these go on forever, and 6, we have 6, 12, 18, and so on. So our least common multiple is 12. So we can do 1 over 3 times 4 over 4, because 3 times 4 is 12. So this is 4 twelfths of his sandwich. The ham, 2 over 4 times 3 over 3, because we need 4 times 3 to equal 12. 2 times 3 is 6, so this is 6 twelfths of his sandwich. And now 1 6, well, 1 over 6 times 2 over 2, because again, we need 6 times 2 to equal 12. 2 times 1 is 2, so 2 twelfths of his sandwich. So which one is bigger? Well, we got 2, 4, and 6. So there is more ham in his sandwich than anything else. Now we're going to plan our solution. Aisha ate one quarter of the carrots in her bag. Enrique ate three twelfths of the carrots in her bag. Compare the amount of carrots they each ate. So we have one fourths and three twelfths, and we need these to have the same denominator. So we can do this one of two ways. We can make three twelfths have a smaller denominator, or we could have one fourth have a bigger denominator. Now I'm gonna do mine with multiplication. So 4 times what equals 12? Well, 4 times 3 equals 12. So if we do 1 times 3 equals 3, and 4 times 3 equals 12, they ate the same amount. We can check it the other way. 3 over 12, if we divide each side by 3, because 12 divided by 3 equals 4, so that gives us the same denominator over here we get one fourth, and one fourth and one fourth are equal. So our answer is the same. Now we need to find the error. What did Michaela do wrong? Michaela said that three fourths of the figure, of figure one is greater than two fourths of figure two. Find and correct her mistake. So yes, if we had the same sized figure, if both of these were as big as figure two, and this was also colored in, then yes, 
three fourths would be bigger. But because these aren't the same shape, because we're not comparing the same thing, then these are two different fractions. We can't compare them like this. We'd have to know the size and exactly what numbers are there, but we can't. We don't know that right now. So we know for sure that these aren't, we can't compare them like this. Now number 21, write three fractions that are not greater than one half. Well, we could do this a number of ways. We could check with our number line over here. So we could do one half and they just have to be smaller than one half. So one third is smaller, one fourth is smaller, and one fifth is smaller. We could also do this with multiplication. We could take 1 over 2 times, uh, if we multiply it by 50, that'll give us over 100. So 50 over 100. So any fraction smaller than 50 over 100. So 48 over 100 is smaller. 42 over 100 is smaller, and so on. Okay, how can I compare two fractions with the same numerator? Well, this is that same numerator trick we've been talking about, that if they have the same numerator, we can compare the denominators. So say we had 5 over 15, 6, well, can't, the numerators have to be the same. So if we have then 5 over 20 and 5 over 25, we can see that 25 is bigger, so this must be less than and less than. On to the homework. Okay, so let's go through the example. Ellen has three cans of paint that are the same size. The can of blue paint is two-thirds full, the can of green paint is three-fourths full, and the can of yellow paint is one-half full. Order the paint colors from least to greatest. So first they find the least common multiple, which happens to be 12 here. And then they multiply to find the equivalent fractions. So 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 3 is 12, and 2 times 6 is 12. And remember, we have to do the same thing to the top that we did to the bottom. So 2 times 8, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 3 is 9, and 1 times 6 is 6. So then they ordered them here with their new equivalent fractions. 6 twelfths to 8 twelfths to 9 twelfths, and then they brought in the old fractions. So from the least to greatest, the amount of color in paint is yellow, blue, and green. So let's do this for ourselves. Look, that's the whole page. So now we're going to compare using uh, greater than, less than, or equal to. So we have one half and one third. We can use our numerator trick here because both have one in the numerator and three is a greater number than two. So this one is going to be one half is greater than one third. Now five over 12 and one over four. Well, we need these to have the same denominator. So we can say four times three is 12. So 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. Which one of these is bigger, 5 twelfths or 3 twelfths? 5 twelfths is greater than 3 twelfths. 4 fifth and 8 tenths. Well, we can do this with division because we know 10 divided by 5 is 2. So 2 over 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 2 is 5. These are equal. 7 over 10 and 4 over 5. Well, this is the same up here, but we're going to do it the other way. We're going to take the smaller number in the denominator and we're going to multiply that by 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 2 is 10. So we can compare them now because they have the same denominator. And 8 tenths is greater than 7 tenths. Same thing here. They keep giving us 5 and 10s. So we know we can either multiply or divide. 
I'm going to pick multiply for this one. So if we multiply each side by 2, 2 times 1 equals 2, and 2 times 5 is 10. Therefore, these are equal. They're worth the same amount. 2 over 5 and 2 over 8. We can use our numerator trick, and we can say that because these both are 2 in the numerator, which one is a bigger number? 8. So 8 is less than. So 2 fifths is greater than 2 eighths. Now we have 9 tenths and 7 eighths. We can figure this out by finding a common multiple, or we can use our chart. So let's use our chart for this one. We haven't used that so far. So we have 9 tenths and 7 eighths. Those are real close. So if we go all the way down, we can see that 9 tenths is greater than 7 eighths. If I were to multiply this one out to find it without my chart, I would multiply each side to get them to have 80 in the denominator. But those gives us some pretty big numbers. So let's actually do that with number eight over here. So if I multiply this by 10 over 10, we get 40 over 80. And if I multiply three times eight, it gives me 24 over 80. So which one is bigger? 40 over 80, or 80 is bigger. And now 1 fourth and 6 twelfths. Well, immediately I know that I can take 6 twelfths and that also equals 1 half. I can go over to my chart and see 1 half is much bigger than 1 fourth. We could also take 6 twelfths and divide each side by 3 so that our denominator is also 4. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I know that 2 fourths is greater than 1 fourth. Okay, we're going to do two of these. We're going to do number 11 first. So we need to find a common multiple. So for 4, we have 4, 8, 12, 16. For 6, we have 6, 12, 18. And for 12, we have 12, 24, and so on. And I can see right away our common multiple is 12. So we can take 5 over 6 times 2 over 2, because 6 times 2 is 12. So that gives us 10 twelfths. And for our 3 fourths, to get 12 in the denominator, I have to get 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. So we then have 7 twelfths, 10 twelfths, and 9 twelfths. So we know 7 twelfths is the smallest. The next would be 9 twelfths, which is also 3 fourths. And then 10 twelfths, which is 5 six. That's our answer right there. And the other one we're going to do is 12. So two of these already have the same denominator. So we want to try to get one half into the same denominator. So what do we have to do to two to get it to equal eight? Well, we can multiply it by four. So one times four is four, two times four is eight. So now that's a whole lot easier to compare. So we can say two eighths is the smallest, then four eighths, which is equal to one half, and seven eighths. This is our answer. And if you want a little bit of a challenge, you can do number 10 and number 13, where you find your least common multiple, also known as your LCM. So this one, I would try to get all of these to have the same denominator of 24. And over here, I would want them all to have the denominator of 12. So give that a try. OK, 
Okay, number 14. Patty has two glue sticks that are partially used. One has one fifth left and one has three eighths left. Which glue stick has more? So we need to have these have the same denominator. So we need to find our multiples first. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And for 8, we have 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and so on. So what's our least common multiple? It's going to be 40. Sometimes you have to get up to some pretty big numbers. So 1 fifth, we have to multiply each side by 8 because 5 times 8 is 40. So that gives us 8 over 40. And then over here, we have 3 eighths times 5 over 5 because 8 times 5 is 40. So we have the same denominator. So 3 times 5 is 15. So then we get 15 over 40. So which one has the most left? The one with 3 eighths. We could also check that with our chart over here. So we have 3 eighths and 1 fifth. 3 eighths is bigger than 1 fifth. We're going to skip number 15, but you can do the same thing with your chart over here. You just need to find which one is going to fit in a 2 6 inch hole. So, and our fractions are 1 eighth, 3 eighths, and 1 fourth and then two six. So you need all of these to have the same denominator. So check that one out on your own. But I'll give you a hint with your multiples. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 30, Two. So 8, 16, 24, 32, and 6, 12, 18, 24. So what's our common multiple? It's 24. So you want all of those to have the same denominator of 24. Okay, number 16, what's our least common multiple of three and eight? Well, we're gonna do the same thing we just did up there. We're gonna do three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and for eight, we have 8, 16, 24, 32. Well, where do these line up? 24. So our least common multiple is 24. And now which fraction is not greater than 1 half? So we need to compare these. And I'm going to use my number chart here because this is a lot to put into simplest form. So seven, so we have our one half right here. Seven eighths, yep, that's bigger. Four six, one, two, three, four. Yep, that's bigger. And three fifths, one, two, three. Yep, that's bigger. So two fifths must be our answer. Let's check. Two fifths. Yep, that is smaller. Okay, and that is the end of lesson six.